you guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend, science, astronomy, and telescope. Another lovely summer day, and as you can see, I'm in the Bordeaux 2. I also call it gray zone because of the color of the light pollution map. But here we go. Actually, yesterday was also clear, but I'm dead tired. I took out everything, the telescope, the accessories, the tripod, the camera, and then it's like, I'm too tired. I was dead tired. The good thing is, it only takes five minutes. Just carry the carry case, the the tripod with the camera, and then the top and then the Dobson base. So it doesn't take that long, especially I'm only going from like 40, 50 feet. Anyway, so another beautiful clear night. And I think I'm going to show you guys a couple star clusters. So I could probably have the flash on. Won't be no big deal. And... Again, you guys should always have a map with you. And you guys tell me if you guys like these ones. So I'm just picking random ones. And the Summer Milky Way is still in a good position. So we're going to try M39, M29. And let's try Stock 1. It's a big open cluster. You guys tell me if you guys normally see these ones. Uh, because they're open clusters, it should be fairly easy in small to medium telescopes even with some light pollution so let's give it a shot i got the 12 inch dogs in here as you can see let me turn off the ride gel and the star sense is already set up so let's see we're going to start with a 38 millimeter so a low power m39 is up here now it's in the northern cross constellation i'm not sure if you can see that In a better position to me as you can see it's pretty up now i don't have my angle meter with me but that's probably i say close to 80 80 degrees like north the telescope roughly it's saying uh do not move it's trying to find the object and it just keeps on doing that so it's been like that for over 30 seconds so i think i need to turn on my location settings oh they are on okay Okay, for some weird reason. Oh, that must be it right now. So, it's pointing. Let, let me show you guys. So, as you can see, it's red. It's on the item. So, if I move the telescope, you know, obviously, it's on the item. But it's not turning green. So, it does that. So, if you guys find that it keeps on doing that. It still could be in the eyepiece, but sometimes it messes up like that. But I find it's still there, the item, so don't worry about it. You can see it's there, and if you pan a little bit, it, it almost fills the whole entire field of view. It's only 52 apparent field of view, so it's not a wide, wide uh, 38 millimeter. It's kind of more like a palazzo, but it, and it's, so it's fairly big in the field, you're, the, almost a whole uh, field of view. But if you pan a little bit in any direction, you'll see that it has to be it because there's really nothing. It, it's, it thins out like a lot. Now I'm going to put a 2 inch. Normally when I put that huge 2 inch 31 millimeter, that's a 81 degree field of view. It is so heavy it off balances. So let's use something a little bit lighter. It's the Mead. 4000 series, 56 millimeter, two inch Palazzo. Now I know Teleview has a 55, Celestron has an Omni 56. So, and it's, it's maybe, I think it's probably even less than half of that other bigger eyepiece I have. So as you can see, there's no balance issues and let's take a look. Yeah. With, with this eyepiece, it's about half the size, so you can see more space. Now, it's not an amazing cluster, but it's decent. I could probably see, let me see, about a dozen stars. Now, could be, if you Google it, 
it probably would say at least double or whatever because there could be really dim ones and who knows how far in the field of view it goes but for me i see at least 12. Um, right after that cluster it thins out a, a little so you can kind of see where it is but even with an inch and a quarter if you don't have a two inch eyepiece uh, inch and a quarter just a cheapy one i think i about a year ago i showed you guys if you want a low power eyepiece type of thing I can't remember what it's called, but if you just look at that video, you'll see it's a 38 millimeter in an inch and a quarter, and it says it's about 50 to 52 degree field of view. So it's a, if you don't have a two inch, you could use that and it fill the whole view and you can easily tell. You don't really need any more power than that because if you go in, you're not gonna see the whole view. So there's that. So uh, depending where you guys live, you guys tell me with whatever light pollution, have you ever seen M39 with your telescopes? What light pollution you have? And again, it kind of has to be like kind of lowish power, medium or high power you might see it, or you might be too close. So let's go to the next one, which was M29. There it is. Oh, and this one, as you can see, is a lot higher. So we're probably near 85 degree uh, north on the tube. So it's kind of pointing. And that's why I picked these three because they're still kind of high and you can kind of still see it. The summer triangle stays like from early spring and goes almost till fall. So I'm going to leave this two inch eyepiece and just see what do I see in the eyepiece? Too low or do I need to magnify more? So since it's already here, let's leave it. There's a lot of stars because the Milky Way is there. But right in the center, even with this low uh, 56 millimeter eyepiece, I can see there's a glow and it looks to me like it's about eight to 10 stars. Uh, and then around it, it's kind of much, much like there's nothing. I mean, there's still a glow, but there's no big bright stars like that. So it kind of looks like that's what it has to be. Now I'm gonna pop in the 38 millimeter so we can get a little bit closer, a little bit more power. Okay, so with a 38 millimeter, so it's a little bit more power. Again, you can kind of see there's a little patch in there, kind of looks like a um, square type of thing uh, on its point and then with a couple other stars around it. You know what it looks to me? Kind of like Pegasus, the square of Pegasus. And then it has a couple uh, stars to the side. So it kind of looks like the constellation to me, except it's uh, upside down instead of the other way around. It's kind of neat. Okay, I'm going to have to put more power. So let's go to a 13 angler and see what happens now. Yeah, it definitely is bigger. And again, it still looks like the square of Pegasus to me, and then the stars that come off it. Take a look and tell me if you agree, but it's pretty freaky. I like it, so it's not bad. You know, sometimes we don't have to look at stuff that are like a thousand stars in a cluster. Sometimes just a, sometimes a weird shape gives it like a little personality, right? So that's a, a kind of cool one too. But anyway, let's go to our third object for tonight. Obviously, with the flash being on, it's attracting a few more of the bugs. And I'm not really getting bit because it's a little bit cooler tonight. So I don't feel too many mosquitoes. If I do, I'll put on my jacket. But that's at the angle. So it's pretty high angle, too. So, okay, not the 13 Nagler. So I think we should go back to the 38. I have a feeling that stock one is probably going to be disperse and open. Uh, again, it's not green, but that doesn't matter. It should still be here. Uh, I got to focus. Yeah, it's it's there. Um, again, it kind of fits about 
half the field of view in a 38 millimeter. So it kind of looks like it has two parts to the cluster. Like as, uh, I don't know, let me see. I would say about, uh, well, to me, it looks like in a low power, uh, like around six uh, on one side, and then it has a little break, and then it continues a bit more on this side, uh, maybe triple. Um, so, you know, it's kind of neat too. Oh, wow. This, uh, uh, the meteor just go right through uh, the field of view. So that was kind of neat. Unless it was, you know what, my thinking is because a meteor goes, as you guys know, like, like a second. And this one, I could see it in the eyepiece. And if I'm zoomed in, it would be like a split second because the more power you are, as you guys know, and a smaller field of view. So because it, it kind of felt like it took about two seconds to enter the field of view and to exit. So I'm thinking that probably is a satellite. Uh, that's going like slower than a meteor but anyway guys okay that's another okay cluster now it's not super great uh like some of the other ones that we talked about or you might normally see but give it a try if you haven't seen these three you know there's nothing wrong with looking at some of the other not so popular items and uh there we go anyway guys like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you on the next video. If you guys have seen any of these three that I've showed you, tell me how you see it. How? What do you think? Uh, are they on your favorite list? Or is this the first time uh, you're looking at them? For you new people, again, they're not superstar uh, things because in the summer we're always looking at the Hercules, the Dumbbell, the Ring Nebula, the few in Scorpio, like M4, 6, 7, you know, and the Eagle, the Lagoon, you know, all the popular stuff. We're not really looking at these little things, but I wanted to uh, talk about these ones because they're not on the most popular list. So anyway, guys, I do have members video where once a month I post a video that goes just for them. And the one that just passed was huge news. Um, I will put it on the regular channel, but it's going to be a while. So if you want to get the first, what is a major news for me uh, type of thing after 15 years in this location, you have to subscribe to see that video. But also, uh, if you want to help the channel like grow type of thing, it helps out with a little bit of funding so I can do these videos for you. Anyway, guys, like, comment and subscribe. Why not you? Why not me?